Good morning, everyone. It is the day before Easter, and the neighbor decided to send me a picture last night of them chisel plowing. And, uh, well, that means the ground's dry enough to work. The neighbors are doing it, so I must be needing to do it. So to satisfy that urge and give you something besides uh, repair videos to watch, oh, look, I left a rock in there. Um, I thought I'd go for, do some disking for a little while. I am a bit under the weather. A week ago, we were on our way home from Miami from spring break, where it was all nice and, you know, 90, and come home to cold, damp weather, go to watch the daughter at a soccer game, and, well, now I got a cold. I even did the old uh, Rona test, and it says negative. So, I guess it's just ordinary body abuse or something. It's changing climates too fast. But uh, I think she's pretty close to an oil change. Oh, let's see. 33, 44. I'll have to look when I get up in there. So I'm not sure how much narrative there will be in this episode because I might run out of voice. Oh, she's good on oil. Let's see how the batteries are. Let's see, yeah. Uh, double check, nothing's in the way. Hydraulics are all fine, all fluids are good. I haven't checked the radiator, but these cat powered ones always, at least these articulated, had a uh, sensor in the top of the radiator for low coolant. So you turn the key on, it'll tell you if it's low or not. So it's probably been, I'm pretty sure October, since this old girl ran last. So who knows what the batteries are like. Maybe she's feeling like I am, a little under the weather. Not ready to perform. Let's see, I said 33.40. Oh, she's actually a little past 100. No. 33.44. Now I'm at 34.32. Not quite 100 hours. I think it'll take one afternoon worth of running without an oil change. All right, now... It's been like in the past. I got a little bit of a fuel leak up there at the ejection pump. And I think I, if the tank ain't good and full, it uh, can get some air in it and doesn't always want to start right away after sitting that long. Oh, half a tank. It'll probably be all right. Let's find out. Nothing to it. Oop, oil pressure. Now, normally, power shift clutch pressure wouldn't, light wouldn't come on with the clutch pedal down. My dad changed that so it uh, bypassed that. Kind of lets you know that the switch is working right every time. Yeah, yeah. It's complaining about voltage because it's on border of charging. I got to give her a little rev to excite the alternator. All right, I like to let it run for just a moment. It's been months. Come on. There you go. Apparently 11.6 volts is enough to keep it from complaining. So let's see, um, I know, well, let's see, the left wing tire will need air. That one's got a slow leak on it. I'll grease everything up. Other than that, she should be good to go. We'll go uh, satisfy that need to drive some tractor and some spring tillage and see how long I last this cold has definitely uh, got me dragging but you know that's farming there is no second string all right let's rev her up a little and see if we can get that alternator so there we go that'll keep it from complaining I suppose I should knock that rock out of the disc. It'll probably grow another one before it's all said and done. 
I am going to disc down corn stubble that's going to be bean ground. You'll see the packer fill up with uh, corn stubble. I can, oh, let's not hit the barn. Oh, we're hitting the barn. All right, so close. Okay, as I was saying, we'll see the packer fill up with stalks, but I just, I like the looks of the field. Any uh, corn that got missed gets packed into the ground where it can rot or germinate, and then when uh, when we come back for beans and stuff, uh, we can kill that a lot easier. Whereas if it just sits on top, it's just uh, waiting for the right opportunity to become a weed. This also, uh, does a good job of killing some of the winter annuals. Uh, Mare's tail likes to do that, send out some winter annuals. Watch this, let's see if I can put it right by the shop. You know, it's been a few months since I drove it. Um, other weeds that are starting to grow, get some new ones growing. Then once again, we can kill them when planting time comes. So, kind of what some of the organic guys do. They, you know, they want to get those weeds germinated early on, kill them. I'm not against using uh, herbicides, chemicals, um, but I think we need to use them responsibly. side hill. I guess I could pull back ahead on level ground. And then, what's the, what's the point of that, right? I think that left wing also tends to uh, lose a little oil over the winter. Rod seal leaks just a little bit. And so uh, there's air in there. It likes to flop that first time down after sitting for a while. It ain't that bad of a side hill. That probably ought to work. <sighs> if I raise first, that helps get oil back in there. Then we unfold. It's more of the packer that which I think the safety latch mechanism, oh yeah. Another thing to fix that ain't vital, the automatic road transport lock. Um, oh, the cable broke on that, and so that keeps it from dropping down. It unfolds first, then you have to lift it up a little bit to unlock it and then lower it the rest of the way. Without it, it drops to the ground first, like it's doing now, which actually makes it more stable, so. is easier when it's folded out and in the air like that. The zerks are easier to get to and the weight's off from them. And then, let's see, I lower the disc all the way down, same thing. Grease zerks take grease are easier when there ain't weight against them. Oh, let's see, I even got enough fuel, I don't... Pointing downhill, it's almost full. So, all right, I'll get all that stuff done, and next thing you know, we'll be at the field. I'm running out of voice already. Another use for the gang ranch. Okay, everything checks out, except for me. I don't know if we'll make dust, but we should make some dirt move. Soil. Soil, it's soil.
conditions seem to be pretty darn good. Um, wouldn't want it to be any wetter, but this ground is quite sandy. So uh, it dries out pretty quick. It's going pretty good. Um, not where I'm winding up in the packer like usual. Looks like the corn head did a good job. Maybe it's because everything was so dry last fall. The stalks got dried out, they weren't green. So maybe the corn head did a little better at chopping the head the job of chopping that stuff up. But for those that are wondering, this is a 1983 White 4 225, powered with a Cat 3208 turbocharged engine, turbo from the factory. This was uh, the largest White to use the uh, 3208 engine, nice horsepower. They were only made for two, three years. 4225 replaced the 4210, which was not turbocharged from the factory. And then a couple of years later, White got out of the articulated tractor business. And that basically comes down to money. Their sales weren't as strong in that market. They had a lot of notes coming to do from different lending institutions and um, they'd sold off the combine line. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna have to keep this short and sweet and run out of voice. So let's see, they'd sold off the combine line, just slowly but surely, they were hemorrhaging assets in order to come up with money. So, too bad, but it is what it is.
I remember as a kid asking dad if he'd ever get an articulated tractor. We were doing a, actually a field day for white right in this very field. And um, I remember uh, one of the tractors was a 4210. And um, I asked dad if he'd ever get an articulated tractor. He said, no, they take too much room to turn it around. Of course, a couple of years later, he bought this and I said, hey dad, what happened? He says they were uh, running some really good deals. Basically, I couldn't say no. Wow, and that was part of the deal. White was trying to raise capital, so they were running some good discounts on tractors at that time there in the mid 80s. There was one year, I'm trying to think, it was 84 or 85, they produced very few tractors. They had excess inventory. They were trying to raise more capital, so sell what you got, don't build more on spec. Trying to get inventory down. Prior to having this tractor, Dad was uh, chisel plowing and he would uh, put the anhydrous ammonia down with the chisel plow. So we had a tank on the front of the 2155 uh, and an NH3 anhydrous ammonia tank on the front of it. But that was only about 250, 300 gallons. So you're stopping every so often to transfer more in. With this, you could haul the tank right behind the chisel plow, have the extra horsepower, and tuck Made for a lot less stopping, probably less shifting down on the hills and stuff. She's been a good tractor. Had a few things to fix over the years. I guess it ain't totally bulletproof, but now it's mostly, uh, this is about the hardest work it does anymore, so it doesn't have too much of a challenge going on. Kind of surprised I was able to get out this early, but Gene, if you're watching, this is all your fault. He sent me pictures of them, them chisel plowing just down the road last night, and uh, their ground is uh, pretty sandy like this field here, so I knew if I could get on any field, it would be this one. Tomorrow being Easter, I got, you know, plans. So hope everybody out there that is uh, able to have a day or Spend some time with family and enjoy your Easter holiday. I don't think my voice can take too much more talking, so I am just going to say as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.